All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another TelOps webinar. My name is Ben Sote. I am the uh, TelOps Scientific Product Line Manager. Uh, I'll be acting as the host for today's webinar. I just wanted to kind of quickly go over a few housekeeping things, get these out of the way before we get into our presentation. Um, so first, I would like to let you all know that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, so a link to download or view that recording will be sent to all the attendees in a follow-up email uh, after the webinar. Uh, we also encourage questions from the audience. So, you know, if you hear something today that uh, sparks some interest or, you know, you want some more information on, please feel free to use uh, the GoToWebinar question box. Uh, we'll reserve a few minutes at the end of the presentation today to uh, answer some of those questions live. And then for those questions that we don't get to, we will provide written answers uh, in that follow-up email. Uh, last thing here is that today's webinar is actually part one of a two-part series, so uh, be on the lookout for the invitation link for part two, uh, which we will provide again in that follow-up email. So uh, with all that intro out of the way, uh, I'd like to ask a little bit about our audience today using this poll that should be showing on your screen about now. Um, so this uh, this poll question is actually asking about your knowledge of hyperspectral imaging technology, but let's expand that out to uh, infrared imaging technology as a whole. Um, so yeah, please take a couple minutes and vote on this poll so we can kind of get an idea of, of who we're speaking to here today. Um, the presentation here is uh, focused on some of the fundamental aspects of infrared imaging. Uh, that we need to consider when we're specifying a thermal camera system. So, you know, I think there's really kind of something for everyone in here. Uh, so a few more minutes here to, or a few more seconds here to uh, allow some, some additional votes to come in. All right, so I'm gonna close this and let's share our results. Um, it's pretty pretty evenly split here. We've got we got a thermal imaging expert, at least one in here, so that's great to hear. Um, but it's kind of split between uh, these other three categories. So that's great. Uh, we're glad you're all here. Uh, we hope you find this uh, uh, this webinar informative. All right. So finally, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker here today, uh, my colleague Joseph Karak. Uh, Joe is a TELOPS field application engineer. Uh, his territory includes uh, the northern U.S., Canada, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So he's going to be quite a world traveler here. Uh, Joe has a uh, MS degree in imaging science from the Rochester Institute of Technology, and his application focus areas include non-destructive testing, battery research, and experimental mechanics. Take it away, Joe. Thank you, Ben. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to view our webinar. Whether you're here live or have accessed the on-demand version on our website, uh, we appreciate your interest. My name is, is Joe Karak, as Ben said. I am a field applications engineer with TELOPS. Today, I will be presenting to you uh, some of the most important instrumental and experimental parameters uh, which you will need to consider uh, when specifying your ideal scientific imaging infrared imaging instrument. Today's webinar is part one of a two-part series focused on highlighting the fundamental performance parameters of infrared imaging. This edition primarily covers three topics, spatial resolution, radiometric accuracy, and high speed measurements. Please feel free to reach out to my email listed here. I'm happy to field any technical questions. While well, if you have any product or pricing questions, there will be a slide at the end of the presentation, which highlights our business development team and lists their regions and contact information. Okay, let's get going. Quick outline to get started. We will begin with a brief introduction to TELOPS and some of our products. I will also highlight some of TELOPS unique capabilities throughout the presentation. Uh, we will then get into a discussion on spatial resolution, going over some fundamental definitions, as well as some system configurations, uh, considerations for applications where spatial resolution is critical. We will then take a look at radiometric accuracy of thermal imaging data, including a discussion on calibration methods and the effects of pixel well filling levels. Finally, we will wrap up by detailing uh, camera design and operational parameters to consider when making high speed measurements. TELOPS, uh, for those who may be hearing about us for the first time, is a leading supplier of high capability scientific thermal imaging products. 
Founded in the year 2000 uh, and headquartered in beautiful Quebec City, Canada, Telops now employs around 100 employees worldwide uh, with office locations in Canada, the US and France. Telops develops and manufactures several lines of scientific infrared imaging systems designed to suit a wide range of applications. These product lines include uh, multispectral and hyperspectral systems, as well as high performance and entry level high speed broadband systems. We also offer uh, cameras and accessories suited for high dynamic range measurements, uh, long range measurements, and uh, OEM applications. Hopefully the, the GIF is working on this slide and you can see uh, the high speed filter selector flicking back and forth on our high dynamic range camera there. Telops serves customers in several markets, uh, including but not limited to defense and security, industrial labs, uh, universities, and national laboratories and research institutes. Our cameras have been deployed for use in a broad array of applications, uh, including those seen here, and new applications are being developed every day. Um, so please feel free to reach out and see how we can help you with your measurement challenges. I think we have a couple of interesting videos here too. Uh, going right now, that is a tensile strength test of a steel rod. We also have this one is the fuel injection cycle of an engine cylinder. Those are both pretty cool. Okay, and now with uh, all of the introductory material out of the way, we can move on to our technical presentation. As was mentioned earlier, this is part one of a two-part webinar series, where today we will be focusing on spatial resolution, radiometric accuracy, and high-speed measurements. We will start with spatial resolution and define some basic terminology. Spatial resolution uh, refers to the ability of an imaging system to resolve small objects or features and is one of the most important parameters to consider when selecting a thermal imaging camera. The primary measures of spatial resolution for thermal imaging systems are pixel pitch and instantaneous field of view. Pixel pitch is the center to center distance between adjacent pixels and directly dictates the ability of the camera to resolve fine detail within the recorded image. Um, under the same conditions, a detector with small pixel pitch will be able to get more pixels on target, leading to images with superior quality and detail. Uh, conversely, a detector with larger pixel pitch is able to collect more photons, which is ideal for high speed measurements, low signal environments, and situations where longer integration times are not possible. Instantaneous uh, field of view, or IFOV, refers to the solid angle through which a single detector pixel is sensitive to electromagnetic radiation uh, and can be envisioned as the size of the area each individual pixel sees. IFOV is directly related to TFOV or total field of view, which specifies the total observable extent, which can be captured by the system with a single measurement. The total field of view is often expressed by the detector format, uh, which gives the horizontal and vertical dimensions of the pixel array. For example, a, a 640 by 512 detector array. While the, the pixel pitch is a detector uh, specific fixed value, the physical dimensions of IFOV and TFOV can be modified through use of different four optics, such as external lenses or telescopes. Um, and this ensures that you get the, the number of pixels on your target of interest uh, maximized. Now that we have uh, some of the basic terms down, we can go through a few general cases. Uh, the first being long range measurements. Long range measurements typically require uh, large format detectors with small pixel pitch. We can choose an optical setup for such a detector that features a long focal length lens in order to decrease the single pixel IFOV uh, and ensure that there is adequate pixel coverage on your distant target. The trade-off in utilizing a long focal length lens is a reduced depth of field which results in smaller range of depth in which objects can be focused. Um, for long range measurements, this usually isn't a concern as foreground and background details are often less important, but this is still something to consider. Uh, a reduced aperture can help by increasing depth of field, but here the trade-off would be reduced photon collection, which might require higher exposure times uh, and could limit your maximum frame rate. Next, we have another case uh, for optimizing small object measurements. Here, the goal, once again, would be to maximize the number of pixels on the target so we can ensure high fidelity imaging. Um, we, again, could, could select a 
large format detector with small pixel pitch. However, we may utilize a macro lens or a microscope lens in this case to decrease the pixel IFOV through magnification. Uh, this is extremely uh, well suited for small scale object measurements, but similar to the last example, the trade off uh, to increase magnification is decreased depth of field and total field of view. Whichever scenario you have, uh, Telops can provide a system configuration which is optimized, optimized to suit your resolution needs. Telops fast IR HD and super HD models feature 10 micron pixel pitch in several large format array sizes, uh, ideal for applications requiring the highest spatial resolution. In addition, uh, Telops offers a full featured line of compatible lenses, including 200 millimeter options for long range measurements and one in 4X magnification microscopes for a small object examination. That concludes our section on spatial resolution. We will now move on to discuss radiometric accuracy, including Telops proprietary global calibration method. Calibrated uh, thermal cameras perform radiometric measurements, which produce data in physical units. Uh, typically, these units are in-band radiance or radiometric temperature. Many applications uh, require high radiometric accuracy, and therefore, it is important to understand the factors which can affect calibration validity and therefore system performance. To understand the implications here, uh, we need to look at both traditional calibration methods as well as Telap's proprietary global calibration method. In order to perform uh, high quality radiance or temperature measurements, the camera must be able to convert signal observed by the detector into digital quantities directly related to a desired physical units of radiance or radiometric temperature. This process known, by ca known as calibration um, is known as calibration. A variety of methods for calibration exist, each offering different utility and advantages. Uh, it is important to note that the nature of any particular calibration process employed can have a significant effect on your accuracy and the reliability of any result. Typically, thermal cameras are calibrated using a multi-point calibration scheme where the user collects multiple references from a high precision black body source at varied temperatures. These acquisitions are used to create a lookup table relating the observed detector signal level to a corresponding radiance value uh, with entries for intermediate values uh, collected, uh, generated through interpolation uh, between measurements. Multi-point techniques uh, can be classified as local calibration methods, which generally yield good accuracy and performance when uh, remaining under the specific set of conditions under which the calibration measurements were collected. Local calibration measurements suffer from reduced accuracy anytime the user wants to use a different set of parameters uh, than those selected to construct the calibration. For example, if a multi-point calibration is uh, created using a 25 microsecond exposure time, the user would need to expect degraded accuracy uh, if they were to increase the exposure time for their measurements to 100 microseconds. In addition to exposure time, uh, there are several other parameters which must be kept constant when using multi-point calibrations, including window size, frame rate, uh, and even the operating environment of the camera. As another example regarding operating environment, you would need to uh, expect degraded accuracy if you collected a multi-point calibration in an indoor facility and then moved to an outdoor location to perform your measurements. The takeaway here uh, should be that while multi-point calibrations can generate high accuracy measurements within a narrow range of experimental parameters, they will suffer degraded accuracy and performance when the camera is operated outside of those predetermined environments. Uh, in contrast to, to traditional methods, Telop systems uh, utilize a proprietary global calibration method, which maintains radiometric accuracy across the entire operating space uh, available to the camera. This allows you to adjust parameters such as exposure time, frame rate, window size, or operating environment without ever needing to perform uh, tedious black body recalibrations and while maintaining radiometric accuracy. In a little more difference, uh, the key detail between traditional methods and Telop's global calibration method is that Telops calibration is implemented using observed detector flux uh, rather than detector counts directly. Detector flux is computed by assessing the observed digital counts per known exposure time. Um, assessing, assessing flux in this fashion allows the camera to utilize any exposure time supported by the detector 
without sacrificing radiometric accuracy or requiring any recalibration. The figure you see here demonstrates uh, how the observed detector flux can be modeled for black body reference sources of increasing temperature. You'll note that there is a flux offset in the absence of a black body source here where the curve crosses the, the Y axis. This offset is similar to detector count offsets utilized by traditional methods, which arise uh, from things like self emission of the optical components within the camera or thermally generated charge carriers inside of the detector or readout electronics. Here we have a flow chart which shows the overall process for the Telops global calibration. Um, detector counts are, are first converted to fluxes by dividing observed counts by exposure time. A pixel-wise non-uniformity correction is then performed by determining the offset and gain parameters by e uh, for each individual pixel, followed by a bad pixel replacement. And then finally, a dense lookup table is created in the factory using high temperature black body sources, uh, which can be used to relate observed photon flux to radiance or radiometric temperature. Reiterate, Telops flux-based global calibration maintains radiometric accuracy even when adjusting the experimental parameters uh, without requiring the analysis of any reference black bodies. This represents a sizable increase in operational flexibility and overall usability of the system uh, while maintaining radiometric accuracy and performance. While the calibration method utilized remains important in uh, regards to establishing and maintaining radiometric accuracy, accuracy and performance is also highly dependent on pixel well filling levels. Radiometric accuracy is maximized uh, when pixel well filling levels fall within the range of optimal well filling conditions specified by detector performance characteristics uh, and your calibration method. Each pixel within the detector array can be considered a storage well for photo generated electrons with a maximum defined capacity. During exposure, uh, the number of stored photoelectrons within a particular pixel compared to its total well filled capacity is referred to as the pixel well filling level. Uh, the pixel well filling level is dependent upon many factors, including your well depth, uh, exposure time, ambient temperature, target temperature, target emissivity. Um, and even things like atmospheric attenuation of the target signal, among others. An increase in pixel well filling leads to a decrease in NETD or noise equivalent temperature difference, uh, which describes the smallest temperature difference a radiometric system can reliably detect. For TELOPS uh, global calibration, optimal radiometric accuracy is achieved when detector well filling levels fall between 10 and 90% of the total well filling capacity. This corresponds uh, directly to accuracy of about 1C or 1% up to 150 degrees Celsius and approximately 2 degrees C or 2% up to 2,500 degrees Celsius. Uh, so uh, TELOPS utilizes a unique global calibration method that allows for complete flexibility of important instrumental parameters like exposure time, frame rate, uh, operating environment, and others while uh, maintaining high levels of radiometric accuracy and precision. Furthermore, um, our operating software, uh, Reveal IR, has an integrated calibration builder function, which allows a user to create a multi-point calibration specific to their particular environment or experiment, if desired. Our goal is to provide uh, the user with all the tools they may need to operate the camera, uh, of course, according to their, their best experimental practices. We will now move on and talk about uh, important experimental factors to consider when performing high speed measurements. Several applications uh, may require infrared cameras that possess high speed data acquisition in order to produce uh, stop motion quality imagery without motion blur of any target. Uh, Telops high speed systems are well suited for the characterization of objects or scenes undergoing rapid changes uh, in radiance or temperature, such as those found in uh, experimental mechanics ballistics or combustion monitoring applications. When selecting a high-speed thermal infrared camera, uh, optimize, uh, optimal imaging performance is largely dependent on uh, a few factors, those being integration time, frame rate, and detector and uh, pixel characteristics. Joe, we are not on the same slide. I think you need to advance a slide forward. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Um, to begin, I will provide a general overview of how a cooled infrared detector operates. 
Um, infrared photons from the scene incident on the detector are converted into electrons uh, with the efficiency of this conversion documented as the quantum efficiency of the detector. Each individual pixel acts as a storage well with a maximum defined capacity for accumulated photogenerated electrons. After some time, uh, the charge contained within the individual pixels of the FPA is read out by the readout circuit, and that signal is then digitized for display and processing. Each step in this process uh, takes time, and a thermal imaging system specified for high-speed measurements should be optimized to reduce the time required for each of these individual steps. For thermal imaging systems, integration time is uh, analogous to exposure time or shutter time in a visible camera and represents the amount of time that the detector's focal plane array is actively collecting photons from the scene. Imaging systems uh, which support the use of very short integration times uh, allow for the collection of near stop motion like imagery uh, in dynamic scenes, minimizing the occurrence of any motion blur, uh, which you can see here shown with this set of bicycle gears. Uh, on top, we, a, a longer exposure time was used, which uh, allows some motion blur. We're on the bottom, a shorter exposure time uh, cleans that up, and we have a nice crisp image. Uh, the integration time often represents the largest portion of the total time required to collect and read out a single image frame uh, before resetting the focal plane for the next image. The, the total time required for image generation is often labeled the frame rate. Uh, and is usually expressed in units of hertz or frames per second. Frame rate can be increased uh, by decreasing the integration time or operating within a small portion of uh, your detector window called the subwindow, thereby decreasing the number of pixels that the camera needs to read out with its readout electronics. An imaging system capable of uh, achieving a high frame rate, like our fast IR cameras, can maximize the amount of uh, time between collected images and therefore can record images of dynamic events uh, with greater temporal resolution than a, a low frame rate system. One challenge when operating a thermal sy uh, imaging system at a short integration time and high frame rate is maintaining radiometric accuracy of the measurement. Um, as we previously discussed, a scientific grade thermal imaging system are often calibrated to transform the detector signal into a physical quantity, uh, such as radiometric temperature, Typically, using a shorter integration time, uh, the shorter integration times required to achieve high frame rates dramatically decreases the signal level uh, received by the detector and therefore the pixel well filling percentage when compared uh, to higher integration times. As was noted earlier, uh, TELEP's proprietary global calibration allows for measurements with accuracy on the order of 2% or 2C up to 2500C, provided that the pixel well filling level falls between 10 and 90%. Of, of the maximum. So for high-speed applications, it is essential to design your imaging system to ensure that these conditions are met when operating, even at short exposure times. Um, so for an example, the Telops Fast M3K is optimized for high-speed performance and features a uh, 320 by 256 pixel array detector with a 30 micron pixel pitch and a short 3.4 milli electron well depth for each individual pixel. This short well depth uh, and a large pixel pitch ensure adequate photon collection during short integration times um, to assist with achieving this minimum 10% well filling condition to maintain radiometric accuracy. The Telops Fast IR series of broadband thermal cameras are the fastest imaging systems on the market. Our mid-wave system, the M3K, uh, which I just spoke about, is highly optimized for ultra-fast imaging. With its cooled uh, indium antimonide detector, it is capable of achieving up to 3,100 frames per second in full frame mode and up to 100,000 uh, frames per second when operating in a smaller sub window. On the short and long wave sides, we also have the S1K and the V1K, uh, which each feature a 640 by 512 detector capable of uh, imaging up to 100 or 1,000 frames per second in full frame mode. If you have uh, the need for high-speed thermal imaging measurements, uh, the Telops Fast IR series is definitely the right way to go. Okay, um, so to wrap up our, our, this part of our webinar series, um, your overall takeaway should be that an infrared imaging system needs to be specified and designed intentionally uh, based on your intended usage. We have discussed spatial resolution and its effects on image quality. 
we discussed radiometric accuracy in terms of calibration, as well as the versatility and robust, robust accuracy of TELOP's proprietary global calibration, uh, which we stated can maintain radiometric accuracy under changing or challenging conditions. And finally, uh, we discussed considerations for high-speed infrared imaging, including how TELOP systems uh, utilize ultra-short exposure times for stop-motion-like imagery. So overall, if, if your measurements require one of the most advanced systems on the market today, which can be optimized to provide clean and accurate data for any application, uh, you need to get your hands on a TELOP system. So thank you uh, for listening. Here I have the contact information of each of our business development managers listed by region. Uh, if you have any product inquiries, please feel free to reach out and they will be happy to assist you. And I will turn back over to Ben. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Uh, nice presentation. Very well done. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, the overall takeaway here that we need to really think about what the intended usage of the system is when we're kind of designing the specifications. So, you know, again, if you have a need, if you have a question about how a thermal imaging system can uh, help your experiments, please uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to, uh, to chat about it with you. So a um, couple questions have come in uh, throughout this webinar. So we got a couple minutes. I think we can, uh, we can address some of these here. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of talk about the uh, global calibration, Joe, uh, a lot of interest in the, in the question box. Uh, is the okay. global calibration uh, standard feature on all of the Telops cameras? Oh, sure. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the global calibration is a standard feature on all of our broadband systems. Uh, that would be the fast IR, the Spark, and the multi-spectral cameras. Um, while our hyperspectral cameras come equipped with integrated black body sources uh, for push button uh, calibration through our software. Um, I personally feel unless you need the spectral fidelity of the hyperspectral system, the uh, versatility of our MS and fast IR lines is, is really special and sort of uh, unmatched in the industry. Um, this is obviously a little simplistic, but with the global calibration uh, and our automatic exposure control, which is another feature that we will be talking about in part two of this webinar series, um, our broadband systems are, are almost point and shoot returning calibrated uh, radiometric temperature or radiance data. They, they really are pretty impressive. Um, Good. Do we, have a, do we have another one, Ben? Yeah, we got a couple more here. Um, uh, talking about high speed measurements, uh, we talked about short exposure times. So what are the shortest exposure times that our high speed cameras can support? Oh, sure, uh, that's another good one. Um, I believe for our M3K system, which is our, our fastest in terms of frames per second, uh, 3100 frames per second in full frame mode, the shortest exposure time you can set is one microsecond. Um, of course, doing so would require a lot of signal in your scene um, to achieve the appropriate well filling conditions we talked about, likely something pretty hot. Uh, I believe this minimum exposure time is the same for our MS uh, M3K system uh, and the, the S1K. While some of the, the other systems, I think the M1K, maybe the V1K uh, can go a little bit shorter than that, maybe half a microsecond uh, based on uh, their, their detector and readout limitations. Um, of course, if, if anyone has any, any more specs that they would like to look at, uh, you can go onto our website, telops.com, uh, and explore the data sheets for any of our products. Um, we also have uh, past webinars there uh, where you can uh, check those out if you'd like a little more detail on a specific application area. All right. Um, we got time for one more here, I think. Um, so this one comes in from the audience. This is kind of an interesting question. Uh, I believe one camera is able to do a two-dimensional measurement. So if so, then are we limited to focus on a single plane of the object? Or does the camera receive all of the photons from other parts of a 3D object, which might interfere uh, with the photons that are coming from the object plane that was already set as a target plane? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I'll, I'll take this one on. Uh, there's actually a second part of this, which I'll address also, but... Um, yeah, so essentially we're making a two-dimensional measurement of a three-dimensional object. So uh, yes, photons from uh, sort of behind our focal plane, uh, our, our focal, our, our depth of focus, our depth of field will still um, uh, contribute to the signal. Um, so if you do want that three-dimensional information, uh, yes, just as you sort of mentioned in the, uh, in the question, you can add uh, a second camera in a stereoscopic, um, stereoscopic configuration, 
we've actually had some customers use our hyperspectral cameras to uh, multiple hyperspectral cameras kind of positioned around a gas cloud. And what they did was they combined those uh, uh, the data feeds from those two uh, hypercams to do a 3D reconstruction of of the you know the gas cloud that they were looking at. So. Um, yes, this sort of uh, uh, stereoscopic technique has has been performed before. Um, there's kind of well-established uh, data algorithms that kind of can can combine the the two data streams and recreate a, um, a three-dimensional construct. So, yeah, if you are interested in that, please uh, reach out directly, and we can share some more kind of detailed information on uh, sort of our past uh, work in this area. All right, um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, be on the lookout for our follow-up email, which will have the link for the next, uh, the link to register for the next webinar, all the answers to the written questions um, and the link to the recording for part one as well. Uh, thank you very much. See you next time.